So when it comes to management of preeclampsia, it is the early diagnosis. Yeah, as early as possible, you have to diagnose. That is how by giving the basic care of measuring the blood pressure, weight of the pregnant lady, all these things, when you do it, then definitely you can make out uh, that whether this lady is going for PAH, pregnancy induced hypertension, control of blood pressure, prevention of convulsions, and timely delivery. If at all you think that her blood pressure is not coming under control, she's already about eight months plus, and constantly she's showing uh, signs of going into eclampsia, that is convulsion, then it is very uh, like uh, sensible to see that she is induced, uh, she is delivered. Empty the uterus is the concept. Once you empty her uterus, that once you deliver her, most of the time these women settle down very nicely with their normal blood pressure. That is the, because the placental factor and the other factors are taken off, which are causing the all these uh, problems. Once it is taken off, the placenta is emptied. It is taken out after the delivery. Many a times these people settle down within one week. Patients with uh, high risk of preeclampsia sometimes require antiplatelet therapy also. And 75 milligram of aspirin is daily from 12 weeks. If there is a suspicion of uh, going for PAH, any patient, like already there is a history, what I said, uh, risk factors of teenage pregnancies, very elderly pregnancy, lady with the hypertension, then you can go for antiplatelet therapy. So close monitoring with frequent blood pressure readings, good IV access and meticulous fluid balance are the dictum of uh, treatment of uh, this PA, severe PAH. Full blood count, RFT, uh, that is renal function test, liver function test are very important. If platelet count is more than 1 lakh, other clotting studies should be done. The target of uh, mean arterial pressure is 100 to 140 millimeter of mercury antihypertensive therapy and avoid sudden the uh, drops so all these if at all like uh, these patients are not coming regularly for the checkup that time also you have to be very careful with such women they may suddenly develop this uh, preeclamptic toxemia in a severe stage and uh, they may come to you antihypertensives in preeclampsia commonly used drug is nifedipine even now also it is the same use orally or sublingually if the blood pressure is too high, something like 100 and 200 by 140 and all, then we give usually sublingual nifedipine. The blood pressure is brought to control. Then we maintain with oral or injection uh, uh, antihypertensives as the condition requires with other conditions. So the 10 mg nifedipine repeated after 30 minutes, the maintenance dose is 8 hourly. Maximum dose is up to 20 milligram. It is a protocol actually. There is a, a fixed protocol. Everybody have to understand, which is already sometimes posted in the labor rooms also. Usually in the labor rooms also, those uh, the protocols, the checklist is usually pasted on the labor uh, ward area, the notice board, so that the student will know, like they will not miss out to follow the treatment properly along with their seniors. The lepetalol is another drug which is uh, commonly used depending on the institute. Sometimes uh, in a small places, lepetalol is not used. Because suddenly there can be a severe uh, hypotension, the blood pressure may suddenly come down too much and it is difficult. So under the monitoring in higher centers, Labetal is one of the very important and good drug for uh, treating these people. Hydralazine is also not uh, because of the, uh, the very nature of monitoring, it is not much used. Methyl dopa is usually given as a maintenance dose once the patient delivers and she is still having blood pressure, then it is given for the maintenance. But uh, one of the commonest drug which is used in uh, small places also because it doesn't have much side effects like sudden drop in the blood or anything. But it's a very slow acting drug we can say. Magnesium therapy is one, uh, the, the sheet of uh, treatment uh, we can say like uh, in uh, preeclamptic toxemia, not used as an antihypertensive in severe preeclampsia with uh, CNA suitability, especially when there is a convulsion. Magnesium therapy, magnesium sulfate therapy is uh, works wonderfully well. It is uh, given and you can see that immediately the convergence are controlled even though the patient is to be monitored periodically for the higher concentration of magnesium in the blood because it should not go more than one level which is not good for the patient's bones and nerves. So the fluid therapy you know that always fluid maintenance is very important 30 to 40 percent uh, reduced plasma volume will be there in this patient so we have to maintain the fluid level. But at the same time, because there is a compromised lung function, 
we have to see that uh, the lungs are not overloaded and uh, there is no pulmonary edema in these people after the fluid uh, therapy. And volume expansion reduced, uh, uh, but risk of pulmonary edema should be always monitored in these patients when you are giving the IV fluids. There is an increased risk of pulmonary edema, low crystalloid oncotic pressure. Crystalloids cause a further decrease. Left ventricular dysfunction may develop by some of the women. Uh, optimum fluid therapy is very difficult to achieve in these people because of the renal criteria. The fluid therapy, crystallites are the one which are used very commonly, 1 to 2 ml per kg. And colloids, uh, the blood and blood products are also necessary. And uh, oliguria treated with the fluid challenge of 2 to ml of crystallites. And uh, a nephrologist help is always uh, taken in these cases. So the delivery is close collaboration of the obstetrician. It is a multidisciplinary team approach. An obstetrician, pediatrician, and uh, anesthesia team all are very important. Adequate optimization prior to delivery, blood pressure control, adequate fluid recitation is very important. And uh, supine hypotension avoided by left lateral position. Sometimes they get into supine hypotension because they are given sometimes sedation and this anticonversion therapy, because of that, if at all they get into hypotension. So it is always the left lateral position is very important. Prolonged labor, uh, 32 weeks till fetal lung maturity. And uh, I am steroids. To mature the fetus, we usually give steroids, which will open up the lungs, the alveoli, and make the baby more competent to live in this outside world. So epidural analgesia is preferred choice of labor. Improving placental perfusion is always monitored, reduces stress response and release of catecholamines which occur with pain. And severity of hypotension is similar in spinal and epidural anesthesia. Which anesthesia it is uh, very difficult, but usually spinal and uh, epidural are uh, not much advocated because suddenly there can be hypotension. Uteroplacental perfusion not reduced may increase. Uh, spinals or uh, other techniques are increasingly used in some of the hospitals also. So general anesthesia is usually used only in emergency cesarean section in uh, eclampsia patients. Failed regional techniques that is local uh, spinal anesthesia and regional techniques are contraindicated post ictal uh, patient with low um, gestational uh, diabetes and patients with uh, recurrent seizures, presence of pulmonary edema. These are all indications for general anesthesia. So the general anesthesia drug used uh, to obtain the hypotensive response to laryngoscope to intubation. Magnesium sulfate 40 milligram per kg is the uh, dose which is used to control the convulsions in eclampsia. So coming to the reasons for prolonged delivery after uh, recovery after general anesthesia is Effect of excess of anesthesia agents, it can be effect of excess of opiates because it is given since su such long time for uh, controlling the blood pressure. Suddenly, they may get into a lot of prolonged time to come out of the anesthesia and respiratory depression due to magnesium toxicity. I told you the magnesium level is to be properly monitored in the blood. Otherwise, it can lead to respiratory depression, hypoglycemia and intracranial any event like hemorrhage and all can happen. So we have to be very vigilant not negligent in preeclampsia patient, pre patients. Sintocinan is the drug of choice. Ergometrin, prostaglandin analogs are all very important. So the preeclampsia may worsen after delivery up to 30% of cases only diagnosed postpartum. Control of blood pressure even in the post delivery, we have to observe them for six weeks. Sometimes they may develop convergence even in the postpartum period, even though we think that everything is over Suddenly, we may bring the patient with convulsions. So, a regular blood pressure monitoring is very much required and it can occur in about 30% of the cases. So, the eclampsia is the severity of the hypertension, does not correlate well with the incidence of convulsions. Seizures are generalized and often self limiting. Magnesium sulfate is the treatment of choice. The goals are to cessation of seizures, the fits have to come down and stabilization of uh, airway and breathlessness and also the cardiac problems, prevention of further seizures, prevention of damage, 
to and safe delivery of the fetus. Magnesium sulfate for prevention of eclampsia, that is MAGAP trial. You all have to remember from the exam point of view, what is MAGAP trial? MAGAP was the one like uh, uh, his group, they tried in 2002 about magnesium sulfate. They did a lot of studies and they came out that magnesium sulfate is the drug of choice. So we have started using this drug since uh, many days, but it became evidence-based medicine uh, treatment from 2002. It is accepted. Accepted women with preeclampsia treated with magnesium sulfate had 58% lower risk of eclampsia and a lower mortality rate compared to the placebo group. So this study is very much authenticated. And uh, antagonist at calcium channels reducing systemic and cerebral vasospasm are uh, the one. When there is a magnesium toxicity, we usually give antagonist of calcium channels uh, reducing systemic and cerebral vasospasm. So the regimens of magnesium sulfate uh, therapy are uh, usually a loading dose of 4 gram is given for 5 to 10 minutes. Slowly we have to give, slowly. Hmm? Followed by an infusion of 1 gram for 24 hours post delivery and uh, last seizure, whatever comes later. Recurrent seizures, additional 2 grams are given. Even in spite of 4 grams loading dose, if they still develop conversions. Then we are going to give 2 gram of IV magnesium sulfate alternate every 3 to 4 years depending on the condition of the patient. So the normal level of magnesium toxicity is to be measured. ECG changes are to be seen and tendon reflexes. These are all some side effects of the magnesium sulfate you have to monitor. And the muscle paralysis, respiratory depression are to be watched. So eclampsia management is something like uh, the phenytoin and diazepam have been widely used in the past replaced by magnesium. Any further treatment of seizures is supportive, example intubation and ventilation. There should be always an intensivist because anytime these women may require intubation and also uh, to get them out of that pulmonary edema stage, it's always intensive care unit with the chest physician around are very important. 